God bless you and thank you for joining us again here at Transform Ministries. My name is Evangelist Kyle Taylor. And again, we are moving forward into our segment entitled The Stretching Anointing. We're going to be talking more about that on today. This is part two. This is part two of The Stretching Anointing, part two. Part one was chock full of information. Uh, and as I said last week, we want to kind of break that down into more uh, analytical uh, and more layman's terminology so that our viewers uh, can understand exactly what we are trying to convey in, ter in terms of how uh, God, how the divine, how our creator uh, 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 intends to stretch us uh, so that he can get more of him into us so that those who don't have him can get more than what we had. Amen. Amen. Uh, 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 figuratively, there are many people across the country who do a lot of evangelism, uh, pastors, lay people, etc. Myself, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, two weeks ago, a uh, young man came to the ministry, uh, didn't have a place to stay, was looking for a job. He had a job offer, but it was like uh, a couple of miles from up here in, the, in a couple of towns over in Lyman, Maine. And uh, he came in and sat and listened to our service. And the, the young man gave his life to the Lord. So he, he got saved and uh, uh, he now is in the number. So we are trying, trying to keep track of him. Uh, he didn't have a cell phone or anything. So I gave him all of our information. Uh, and so he left and we're believing that the Lord is going to uh, continue to follow him so that he can become successful in whatever he does. And we do plan to meet him at some point uh, throughout the rest of this year. So as I was saying, there are people that are witnessing and that are, are planting the seed uh, into uh, uh, the, the lost, the, 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 the lost sheep, uh, we should say. But there's more. I'm just going to be blunt about that. There's more than just uh, the planting. As a matter of fact, the Bible does say that he that endureth until the end shall be saved. So we're really not saved. That is a colloquialism that, you know, the, the, the church uses. Oh, I'm saved, sanctified, uh, Holy Ghost filled, fire baptized. Uh, but really and truthfully, it is a process. And I know many of uh, p uh, leaders and lay people and, and overseers that are listening today can view with me, uh, that can, can agree with me that it is a, a process. And that process takes uh, sometimes years uh, to get a person into position to be effective to take care of those who are coming behind them. So if I may say that my sons and my daughters, for example, I want their wineskin to be as uh, uh, big or as, as long or as, as, as vacuous as mine. Amen. Uh, because uh, the dispensation uh, 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 it, it, it turns the, the, the paradigm. It turns ever so often. There's a shifting in the spirit realm uh, that God calls for his acute and his his sensitized emissaries, which most of those are those who have the prophetic ear and the apostolic ear to hear what the spirit is saying to the church. Uh, he's calling for a paradigm shift that. A lot of people that they step into it, they're not ready. Watch this. They're not ready uh, to, uh, to to contain uh, that which is uh, being asked of them in that new dispensation. We're going to get into some of that today about how a lot of people, a lot of pastors in particular and leaders do not want to be Christ like and be cut off. Amen. Amen. When you are stretched to your capacity then it is time for you to be cut off. Watch this. That the new one. Oh, my God. That the new wine that was in you, the last pouring. See, God. See, this is the thing. God's not going to wait and pour into you the new wine for the last time. And then that wine gets old. No, that, that is not how it works. What God does is when God stretches you, when God has called you to another uh, an, another assignment, he pours in the new wine into you. Watch this. Then you'll, you'll, well, you'll stretch first and then the new wine pours into you. Watch this. Then after the new wine is poured, that is the establishment. Hear me. There was an old custom 
uh, that the eldest son put his uh, left hand under his father's uh, uh, right thigh. I believe Jacob did this with Reuben, the eldest son, to transfer that anointing. Now, we all know that, that many of the patriarchs that had sons, uh, they were uh, before they died, they were uh, dim uh, in sight. They couldn't hardly see or walk or what have you. Um, we understand that. But in the natural, but spiritually, they were just poured into, especially with Jacob, which, of course, was Israel. You heard me speak of this uh, last month um, uh, 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 when he gave his 12 sons the uh, their pretty much their, their their walking papers or pretty much their their duties uh, in the earth realm as they became established as the 12 tribes of Israel. He gave them all that information in Genesis 49 and 50. Amen. <clears throat> so my, my 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 point is, is that that was the new wine. That he was giving to his sons. No uh, leader or no father in the Lord should ever be giving their understudies or their apprentices or their, if you want to say this, their armor bearers or whomever that are under them, their mentees, old wine. It is when I am stretched and the new wine is poured in me for the last time, watch this, then I'm cut off so that the new wine spills over into my son. It spills over into the sons of God. And then that is a cyclical event. The church does not want to be cut off and be Christ-like. Therefore, they rescind the stretching uh, uh, mechanism, the stretching technique, because now it becomes, watch this, it becomes a, a glamour and a glit, and it becomes a fashionable, watch this, it becomes a fashionable thing to go to church. Hear me. I know many women that are that are listening today uh, can vouch can vouch for this is that when I go and men. But I'm just talk about the ladies for a second. Uh, uh, when the um, ladies, when you go to wherever you do your shopping, uh, fashion bug or, you know, or, uh, you know, uh, uh, Talbot's or Spiegel or Target or, you know, you know, the mall, wherever you go, Bonton or, you know, Bell Tyler's, where, or, you know, Sears, wherever you get your get your gear, get your outfits from. Many women are very keen and very sensitive to how things look on them. Men do, too, but most of the time it's women. Hear me. If an outfit does not look good on a woman when it's off the rack. Amen. Then she has two options, either to get a smaller size or a bigger size or get the size that's on the rack and get it accentuated or get it tailored. This is what the church is, is, is doing that that really bothers me. And, and then you see a lot of, of churches that are that are complaining that their ministries are not growing by leaps and bounds. And I'm not I'm not talking about in terms of membership. I'm talking about in terms of spiritual prowess. It is because we try to manipulate what God thinks or we try to manipulate how God looks at us. I'm going to say that again. We try to manipulate how God looks at us. <laughs> so therefore, we get a conceptualization in our mindset saying that this is how God wants me to look because I read it somewhere. But you didn't ever get the revelation on what you read. See, God is just more than pages and 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 ink and and, and papyrus, if you will, and and, 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 and leather. Uh, God is more than that. God is more than the logos. God is also the Rima. But when we talk about the stretching, as we talked about in part one last week, we're talking about positioning. Because whenever God stretches something, he, watch this, whenever God pos, uh, stretches something, he positions it. <laughs> whenever God stretches someone, he positions you. Because the form that you were in before was good for that season or that time. But when God comes in and calls for that which he already gave you, <laughs> the stretching happens, then he has to reposition you. If, if you want to be repositioned, he repositions you because there is another, uh, another uh, cistern, if you will, another well that's deeper than the one that you were uh, trolling in before. 
In other words, God wants to pour more in you. As I said earlier, the paradigm and the dispensations are changing constantly, but the church does not want to change with the, with the move with the shift. I'm going to say that again. The church does not want to move with the shift. Therefore, you got a lot of old wineskins laying around. I preached this several years ago that it takes about 30, uh, 30 days to make a wineskin. The Jews, they made those things, right? And when the wineskin got old, I'm still talking about the stretching anointing, watch this. When it began to get old, it started to crack. Amen? So that was an indicator that it was getting past its time of service and servitude. Huh? But there also comes time spiritually and naturally that God is in need of your work and your vessel now. So how can God still get the best out of you or the most out of you with the old wineskin? So they tell me that the Jews, the people that made the wineskins, they took some anointing oil. <laughs> they took some olive oil, watch this, and they begin to smear the sides of the bag, the sides of the wineskin to rejuvenate it so that they could stretch it some more without cracking. They put the oil on it and then they'll, 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 they'll let it saturate inside of the wineskin for a day or two. And then they will begin to stretch it a little more so they can add more new wine. Amen. This is where we are today. We're a generation that don't want to do anything. We're a generation that doesn't want to see anything, but but that which we can touch, that which is uh, uh, automatically adjacent to our senses instead of moving into the spirit. I mean, the church is the same way. The church is going um, going to hell in a handbasket. A lot of them, because the world doesn't see anything different in the church. Because the church is trying to assimilate itself with the world culture. Huh? I don't have a problem with the new age movement in the, um, in, 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 in the churches. You know, I don't have a problem with the new, new kind of praise and worship music and all that. I don't have a problem with that. But when you do not found it with the word of the Lord, there's a problem. Anytime you bring in something new in the new paradigm, in the new dispensation, you should always and constantly make sure that it is made reference back to Scripture. That way, the foundation is true. And as I said many times, the uh, edifice reflects the foundation. The deeper the foundation, the taller the edifice. This building that I'm in right now could not take the, the foundation of this building could not take the weight of one of the Sears Towers in Chicago. Why? Because it's too much weight. This foundation will crack. So it has to be commensurate. The foundation of your life has got to be commensurate with that which God is building on, on it. <laughs> Watch this. Uh, the, the, the length or the, or, or, or the volume of your wineskin, the volume of your stretching has got to be commensurate with the weight of the wine that God wants to pour into you to bring the church in the kingdom mentality. Amen. Having said that, now we'll go to our first scripture. Last week we talked about Exodus 36. And we talked about two men. They were Bezalel and Aholiab. They were the two men that were in charge of uh, 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 getting all of the, um, uh, the offerings together for the construction of the tabernacle and its furnishings. Amen. You, you'll hear that a lot in the tabernacle building. They won't call it, you know, things or whatever they call it, furniture, right? I kind of like that. It's, it's smooth. Furniture. Now, as I said last week, it came a time where they were given too much. Amen. Uh, uh, they were given too much uh, because they were given beyond what the need was. Therefore, uh, we know that our, our needs are automatically or most of the time connected to our revenue, our pockets. Amen. Well, God said, I want to get you out of that mentality. Your needs are, should be connected to what God says and whatever God says you do. But they were so sold out to the need to, to, to the need of God, not the need of the tabernacle. 
Did you catch that? They were sold out to the need. They were so sold out to the need of what God said, as opposed to the need of the tabernacle that they gave more. See, God said, I want you to focus on me, not what I can give you. Huh? <laughs> yes, I said I said you would get you would, you would get a, a, a new car, but you automatically looking at your pockets and saying, OK, new car. Yeah, OK, I make X amount of dollars an hour. He probably talking about, a, you know, a Chevy, a Chevy, uh, you know, the new Malibus or a new Impala or, you know, no VW Volkswagen, whatever the case may be. You know, I said, no, I'm, I'm trying to move you up in, in Audi Lexus range. But you're looking at your finances in the natural instead of looking at me. If you look at me, then I will mitigate in your spirit what you need to go look for, and I'll make a way in the wilderness for you, just as an example. You know, same thing with houses. We, 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 we sell ourselves short, not understanding that. And if that's what you want, that's fine, but God has much more. And if that is your more, then I have no problem with it. I'm not saying that because I may drive this or you may drive that, that my car is better than yours. I mean, your, your car, you may have wanted that car since you were in high school and you're content. Not saying that. What I'm saying is that God wants to stretch us beyond what we see in the natural. So these two guys, they began to collect all the artifacts, collect all of the, uh, the gold and the silver and the, all of the, um, uh, the, the, the linen and, and, and the, the, the hangings, as you will, the curtains. They began to collect all this stuff, and they were getting too much. They were getting too much, which lets me know that the people were really inclined, watch this, to know or to, or, or to see God move or to see God's presence, or not to see it, but, but to experience the presence of God because this was going into the building of God's sanctuary. Now, yesterday, and I have one of my members here in the studio audience who can agree with me. She will not get on the camera, I guarantee you, but trust me, she's over there smiling. Watch this. Yesterday, we talked about what we are doing on, on every Wednesday, uh, building the tabernacle in the sanctuary. And it was very encouraging to me that what we talked about yesterday uh, actually uh, lined up with, um, lined up with um, uh, what we're going to talk about today. Amen. When God stretches you, before the stretching can be uh, validated, there are some things that need to be exited out of your life. I know last week I talked about the stretching and how God pours in. And, and, and that's why I told you we needed to split this into two parts. My wife is over there. She's like, yeah, two parts. Because, watch this. We have so many people, and it grieves my spirit, that, that come into church and, and do the rigmarole, do, do the formalities. You know, they, 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 and, 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 and they, and they uh, come out unchanged. The reason why they come out unchanged is because things have not been left on the altar. <laughs> you might get a stretching in your spirit based on what the man of God said or based on what the worship was, but did you leave something? Amen. This is why you have a lot of church people that come out of church and say, oh, it was a great church service. It was it was magnanimous. Oh, it was good preaching and good teaching and good, uh, or, um, uh, good singing, etc." Uh, the word was good. It was good. I loved it. Now, if you have that happening, and I said this before, uh, too many times uh, throughout the uh, months of the year, there's a problem. That lets me know that when you come into church with whatever you got, and watch this, you are partaking of the service, the, the, the praise and worship, the, uh, you know, the singing, the dancing, if you got praise dancers, timbrels and, you know, harps, whatever you got going on in your church. And then the man of God, a woman of God comes out and gives the word. And you got all that going on. Watch this. And you're partaking of that. Then you leave. But guess what? You left with the same thing that you came in to the church with. You may have gotten some information, but you didn't get changed. Stretching comes to bring change. Hear me. Stretching comes to bring change. But no one wants to be stretched because no one wants to change because to be changed means that I'm inconvenienced. 
I have to now uh, uh, lay on my left side instead of my right side. I like my left side better. I don't like my right side. I don't, I don't like that. Huh? We don't want to change, but we want more from God. God said you, uh, you what, what is it's insanity when you uh, do the same thing and what? Expect a different result. This is not going to happen. God said you're crazy. You on Prozac. You need something. Huh? Come on, somebody. So that means that when God is ready to stretch, he has to put you in position in front of the altar. And this is one of the pieces of furniture that we're going to be talking about the f first in the tabernacle. And we're going to actually bring it in and make one and you know, put it in the scale model. It was the altar of sacrifice or, sacrifice or the brazen altar. OK, I'm teaching the people that before you are, are offered a sacrifice, you're slaughtered. Okay. The priest comes, lays his hand on the on the sacrifice, chops the head off and cuts it up and does whatever they, the other priests need to, you know, for him to, to do uh, to 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 slaughter that animal. And then it is sacrificed on the brazen altar. But catch this. Go with me to Exodus. Twenty. Amen. Exodus 20. We thank many of you for who are joining us on various media outlets across the country. We thank you for being here on today. I won't be very long, but I'll be long enough to get this into your spirit. Amen. God bless you. Exodus 20. And verse 22, we're going to start there. And it says, and the Lord coming out of the King James. And the Lord said unto Moses, thou shalt say unto the children of Israel, ye have seen that I have talked with you from heaven. Oh my God, that'll preach by itself. Ye shall not make with me gods of silver, neither shall ye make unto you gods of gold. And of course, you know, God is referring to the instance when uh, you know, Moses went up into the mountain the people got restless, so they kind of coerced and chided Aaron to make them a golden uh, statue, which was an actual, actual golden calf. And there's a lot of imagery in that that we won't go into today, but he's talking about that. Verse 24, an altar of earth thou shalt make unto me and shalt sacrifice thereon, watch this, watch this, thy burnt offerings, and thy peace offerings, thy sheep, and thine oxen. <laughs> In all places where I record my name, I will come unto thee and I will bless thee. Watch this. This is what we spoke about yesterday. And I'm going to bring it to illumination for you here today. On the brazen altar, there are two types of offering that are to be offered. Sheep and oxen. The book said it. The sheep and the oxen have offering characteristics that are indicative of why they are being offered. The reason why the sheep is being offered is because it is a burnt offering, which most of the time is connected to the sin offering. Amen. Oxen are the peace offerings, and most of the time they're connected to what we call the fellowship offering. If you go to uh, uh, the, uh, the book of Leviticus, it'll tell you all about those offerings. We won't go there today, but again, for application purposes, I want you to hear me. Now, this is the natural. This actually happened in the natural. Spiritually today, we have sheep and we have oxen in the house of God. As I said earlier, you go into church, you go in, you greet, meet, greet, etc. Maybe go take a little bathroom break or whatever you need to do, powder room, whatever. You get into the presence of God. The, the spirit is high. Then the man or woman of God comes forth. The, 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 inf the information is great. 
But really and truthfully, as a segue, I, I believe that uh, the information is only as good as the worship was. Because the worship is what brings you, watch this, brings you into the presence of God. And it also cultivates your, your natural, your, your natural, your spirit man, so that the word of God can be deposited from the man of word of God and it can take root. Sometimes it doesn't happen. But watch this. You're doing all of this stuff. And when you leave the church, you leave the same way that you came in because you have not been offered. <laughs> Anytime you come into the presence of God, you have to bring an offering if you want God to move in your life. Offerings create space and stretch you. <laughs> bring ye the tithe into my storehouse, the book of Malachi says, that there may be meat in, let me say that again, bring ye the tithe into my storehouse that there may be meat in my house. See, when you bring the tithe, the tithe brings the meat into the storehouse. So the storehouse is not empty. So the, so the storehouse can eventually stretch itself because the more tithes come in, the bigger the storehouse has got to be. Oh my God. Hear me. Oxen and sheep. Sheep and oxen. Burn offering, peace offering. Many of us are coming in as sheep. Let's talk. Let's start there first. The word sheep coming out of the Hebrew, it talks about an animal that is being uh, to be shaved or sheared. We, 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 we talked about that yesterday. But it also means uh, the fat. And anytime you're dealing with fat in Scripture, you're dealing with sin connotation. It means the tail of a thing. But it also means to cut down <laughs> and to be cut off. We'll get to that in a minute. Oxen or ox in the Hebrew means a chieftain, a captain. So I might want to write this down. This is going to help you on today. Watch this. A duke or a guide. Huh? Talking about the carnal mind. Let's start here. The carnal mind. The oxen were animals that plowed fields so that the farmer could come behind what was plowed and deposit. Are you with me? The pastor is considered the farmer. <laughs> The word of the Lord is considered the seed. But who cultivates our ground? So that whatever the man of God speaks or whatever the worship team is singing can get a deposit and it can take root in our spirit, man, that will change us and stretch us to the next service or to the next revelation to the next paradigm, to the next dispensation. We're going to get deep here, folks. I need you to stay keen with me and hear me by the Holy Ghost. Watch this. Now, if the oxen is plowing, the oxen is plowing because of a mindset. As I said earlier, it means chieftain, captain, or duke. These are entities and people, watch this, that are in control and, and, and delegate authority. Nothing really wrong with that, but you got to get sacrificed. <laughs> you got to come in the church. You have the oxen spirit. You got to lay that to the side because God wants to deposit. The only thing that you need to do is be cultivated. <laughs> You've got to, in other words, put down who and what you think you are so that God can go in and do the work and do the stretching. So is it the oxen that have that Bogart spirit? How do I know this? First Kings 19 and 19 says, and we know the text very well, Elisha, the son of Shaphat, was plowing with 12 yoke of oxen and he was with the 12. Why was he with the eleven? Why wasn't he with the ninth or the third? 
Why? It is because the strongest or the eldest oxen is at the front because he's the most powerful. He is the leader. But also a lot of people understand this. If you read any, if you know anything about farming, you'll know that whoever uses oxen or ox, they yoke the oxen together, but the, but, but the oxen are yoked together, the eldest with the younger. How can I pour new wine in the old wine skin? I'm going to, I'm watch this. God wants you to come into his presence <laughs> with everything you got or everything you think you got, have and offer it so that he can pour in the newness. The reason why the farmer linked the oxen together like that is so that the younger oxen can learn from the, uh, the, the older one. Because the older one's not going to be around very long. And we read, that, we read that in 1 Kings 19 where when Elijah comes along and throws the mantle, Elisha chops up the wood and the oxen and the family in the town eat, etc. And we know the story. Elisha goes to, 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 to be Elijah's understudy. We've got to get rid of the consciousness of thinking that we know everything so that when we enter into uh, his, his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise, we first, the first thing we enter into is, to a, is into a slaughtering and into an, into an offering, the brazen altar, the oxen, a sacrifice spiritually so that our mindset will not think, so then we will not think that we are more than what we are. Changing the mindset. But the sheep, this is the one that's the deep one. So many of you who don't like deep teachers, you can change the channel. Amen. <laughs> As I said earlier, the fat represents sin, if you, if you catch it in uh, in scripture. Now, even though oxen are pretty much more, more uh, they're, they're bigger than sheep, their percentage of body fat is nowhere near that of a sheep because sheep don't work like that. <laughs> oxen work. Sheep don't work like that. Sheep are lazy. Sheep, only thing they do is eat. Okay, watch this. But the sheep are considered the burnt offering because they have something that the farmer needs in order to grow. That is the wool. The farmer wants to stretch his, his, his commodity and stretch his, 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 his ministry, if we're talking about things in the church, so that uh, it can grow. But what's happening is that the preachers and the teachers and leaders are not preaching to a level that will cause wool to grow on the sheep. So therefore, nobody's changed because the same thing is being taught Sunday after Sunday. Huh? Don't do this. Don't do that. You got to do this. You got to do that. The sheep hear this Sunday after Sunday. Therefore, our ministries have become predetermined. They become predictive so that in prediction, there's no growth. There's no stretching in prediction. The Bible says that, you know, the date or the hour when the son of man shall appear. So really, truthfully, you, you should not know what the man of God is going to speak on uh, Sunday. You may not know to a, a point in terms of ver, ver, verbatim or verbose, but you know, well, he's probably going to tell us again what we should and should not do. Instead of getting into the deep things of God, putting away the, uh, putting aside the elementary principles and relaying the foundations. God said, get away from that. I want to bring you into meat. I slayed the oxen so that you can get into meat, but I also, watch this, I also slayed the sheep so you can get rid of the wool, so you can trim the fat. God said you are the head and not the tail. Didn't I didn't tell you the word sheep in Hebrew means tail. You are above only and not beneath. So what I'm saying is that when we are stretched, we are maturing in the things of God. You're going to start doing some things that you didn't think you would ever do. You're going to start 
forsaking some things and some people that you didn't think you were going to forsake. You're going to wake up one morning and say, I don't want that alcohol anymore. You're going to wake up one morning and you're going to, you're going to, you're going to go outside, you're going to take your box of cigarettes, you're going to, you're going to back over them with your car. Huh? You're going to stop cursing. You're going to stop doing things that are contrary to the spirit of God in your life so that God can come in and stretch you. So therefore, the Sunday that God deals with you and God doesn't deal with us all the time in the house of God. He can deal with me at my correct machine when I'm trying to get a cup of coffee. The Holy Ghost can hit and I can say, oh, my God. Come on, somebody. God can deal with you anywhere because God is all in it all. When God deals with you. He deals with you so that you can come to the altar and offer yourself, offer your oxen spirit and your sheep spirit so God can pour into you and stretch you into the new thing. Stop being lazy. Sheep. Eating all the time. Stop being bogart. Stop being headstrong. Stop thinking you know everything. Oxen. Bullheaded. Huh? You got people that want to learn from you. That's why you yoked up with somebody else. Uh Oh, here we go. Somebody ain't going to like this. God puts us with other people, but we don't want to be with other people. The book of Titus talks about uh, the, the older women teaching the younger women. If I may say that. The book of Proverbs talks about how, how, how sons, how sonship fo- fo- follows sonship, how men need to need, need, need to, to take care of their sons, not necessarily uh, in the bloodline, but also in faith, in, in, in church. But we don't want to do that. So we don't grow. And then we wonder why. We, and we look around. We're 40, 45, 50 years old. And we look around. We're like, is this all that it is? Is this all that God has for me? Is this all that God wants to do in my life? No, it's not. But because you have not put down those Bogart and those those fleshly spirits every time you come to church, you come to church and the man of God is preaching from the throne of heaven. But you're not receiving because you don't want to release and alter up your oxen and your sheep. And then we want to walk. Uh-oh, and then we want to move from the outer court. <laughs> That's where the brazen altar is, the outer court. Then we want to move from the outer court to the inner court. Wait a minute. (laughs) There's an order. There's an order. God, by the time your offering reaches the holy of holies, you should be unrecognizable. As a matter of fact, by the time your offering reaches the, the 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 steps of the inner court where the five pillars are. You should be unrecognizable. The Bible tells me that the tabernacle covering is covered with eight skins, eight curtains, eight skins, if you will, and the eight of, of, of different colors. And the eighth one is the badger skin. Anyone that look, knows, knows what a badger skin looks like, it's ugly. It is not, um, it, it is unsightly, huh? It's not like when you're riding down uh, the road, like where I'm from down North Carolina, you ride down to, uh, to Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, and, and you see the, um, what is that, the, um, um, the uh, Hard, Rock, Hard Rock Cafe, the pyramid, you can see that come out of nowhere. You know, or the Grand Ole Opry House, which is there in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. You see it all off. It's, host, it's glamour and glitz, a lot of stuff going on. No, 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 no. The tabernacle's covering was made to be unsightly because it was supposed to, watch this, to resemble Christ. Because Christ, when he was about to be hung on the cross, he was beaten beyond recognition. We, we still want to be recognized when we leave church. We don't want to release our sacred cows so that God can get in us and move in us. We'll go to the church and we'll bring our sacred cow and we'll put it by our side and we'll listen to what God is saying. And we'll give God a shout and we'll Shabbat God. We'll give him a Todah. We'll give him a Yadah. We'll give him a Barak praise. But after the service is over, guess what? We take our sacred cow with us. 
Not understanding that your sacred cow is the oxen and the sheep that God wants you to leave at the altar so that you can reconcile yourself with that same person that you got a problem with out in the parking lot. The same person you had a problem with at 7-Eleven when you were pumping your gas before you went to church. You need to give up something so God can move in your life. Give it up so that you can be stretched because God's waiting. This is what God is doing. Oh, wait, wait, she, she took the cow. Oh, well, wait, no, can't do that yet. No, she took the cow back. When are we, and now I'm talking to us as leaders, going to identify that our people, in closing, should not be coming to church to hear a good word? If you can agree with me, wherever you are, raise your hand. Hmm? We are not supposed to come to church to hear a good word. For the Bible tells me in the last days, <laughs> even in the days of Joseph when he got put second in command of Egypt. Y'all know that's one of my favorite stories. In the last days, the Bible says there will not be uh, a lack of anything, <laughs> but <laughs> the word, huh? <laughs> the presence. I can find good preaching anywhere, but can I find good spiritual teaching? Can I find good meat? Can I? When you come to church, you come to church ready to hear what God is saying to move you from where you were before you got to church. That is the reason, one of the, one of the reasons why you come in. Another reason is, of course, to support the vision of the visionary of that ministry, whatever they want to do. We want to have a barbecue for 800 kids next Saturday. OK, how much you need, Pastor? Uh, I need uh, I need six. I need I need each of you to give me $60. What <laughs> do we do? Oh, no, I can't, I, I can't do that. Getting back to Exodus, the 36th chapter. They didn't care what they had to give. It said that they gave an overflow. They gave more than enough because they were given to a God that was more than enough. They didn't care. It didn't bother them because they were going to get it back tenfold. So when are we as pastors going to understand that it is not our eloquence of preaching skills. It is not our our articulate verboseness. It is not our acumen that wins the people over. It is what am I doing to change your life? What am I doing in my life that's going to reflect and affect your life? So that you can be stretched. I don't want you to come into the church every Sunday and I, well, there goes Sister Tangent right there. There goes Sister Tangent right there. Oh, go Sister Bob, oh, Brother Bob. Hey, Joe, how you doing? Steve, Steve, how you doing, man? Good to see you. I wanted to be like this. Is that Sister Tandra? Is that Sister Danielle? Is that Brother Bob? I, 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 God wants to change your image so that whatever is being spoken by the pastor, the pastor knows being a shadow of a doubt. It was because how God used him and how you use what God used him in that changes and stretches you to the next dimension and your visage changes. Did it not say that when God uh, told Moses to go up to the mountain and he came down, that his face was so bright that he had to wear a veil? When are we going to be stretched so God can move in our lives and in our churches. Give up the oxen, give up the sheep so that God can stretch you.
so that God can, can deal with you in those shortcomings. People who are on alcohol, people, people who, who want to quit smoking, God can do it for you. But you got to submit to the altar. So for those who, who have issues in their marriages and their relationships, God can do it for you. But you got to get before the altar. You got to be, be able to release something so that you can get something from God. Be stretched on this week. Talk to your pastor. What can I do in the ministry? Challenge yourself. Prove God. That's what he said in his word. Prove it and allow God to stretch you so that you can hold more, not only for you, but for those that are in your camp, for those who are in your family, for those who are connected to you. Be an example in the community that you're in. Be stretched and be an armor bearer. Be, be, be a soldier for God. In these last days, God is calling for that. We want to be able to be stretched so God can continue to move in our lives. This is Evangelist Kyle Taylor with Transform Ministries. We thank you for listening for part two of the stretching anointing. Take advantage of it. If you have any questions, if you want to eat prayer, please give us a call. The number's at the bottom of the screen. God bless you. We'll see you again on next week. God bless you. Hello, my name is Evangelist Kyle Taylor. Thank you for watching Transform Ministries. We are here on this station every Sunday at 3 p.m. bringing the word of truth through the scriptures. Our slogan here at Transform Ministries is where every question leads you to purpose. There are many people that are watching today that wish that they could take back some things that they did, they didn't really want to do, but they wanted to take it back. I'm a firm believer that the scriptures allow us, if we study them, to think before we react. So every Sunday at 3 p.m. we are here teaching the word of the Lord that will bring us into a transforming of the mind. The Bible does say, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. So join us here every Sunday at 3 p.m. If you can't make it, take down the number at the bottom of the screen. If you have a prayer request or if you have a question or if you want to pray for someone else please feel free to call us and we will fulfill that request again this is evangelist kyle taylor with transform ministries in the city of bitterford maine thank you for watching god bless you and we'll see you again on next week